Wow, wow, man. It has, uh, it's been a hot minute since I had a chance to get my hands on a voltage. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm kind of bummed we don't have them here every day. This is a machine. As far as I can tell, it looks like they just weren't using it a whole lot. Um, generator on board runs like a champ. It had 30 hours on it when I first fired it up. Had half a tank of fuel, didn't sputter at all. Fired up immediately. Triple air conditioner, triple awning. It has 28 foot of awning space on the door side of the RV, plus an awning on the back. 11 foot garage, loft, bath, and a half, and a pear tree, a pear tree. Uh, apologies to my vocal coach. I mean, if I had one, never had a vocal coach, I'd probably sing better if I did. What I kind of like about this one is that it's not a giant 14 foot garage. It's an 11 foot garage from the back of the dovetail down here up to that front wall where you see that diamond plate little bounce guard. It's 11 feet pretty much on the nose. Um, there's a lot of people, ooh, let me get that sun out of your eyes, sorry about that. There's a lot of people like, man, I just have like a Harley or a couple gold wings or something. I don't have a big giant thing. Um, or we're just using this, like we just love the idea of this being a patio. We don't even have, you know, four wheelers and kayaks or e-bikes. Not that there's anything wrong with that stuff. It's just not for everybody. Not everybody needs all those things. And what that does is, you know, you can only make an RV so big before it's too big. It allow them to really focus on the living room on this one to, uh, I, I think give you uh, a little bit better living space. Now, What's also nice is when you are using this like a three seasons room and there is a, uh, a roll down screen wall, uh, by the way, like garage door saw. Actually, why am I talking about that? We're, we're on a video. I'm not just gonna mention it. Let me show you real quick. And there you go. Now, one of the things I really like about the version they use is that you can only like you can bring it down partially you don't have to fully recoil it up to the ceiling like if you just want to partially open it hop outside and then close it behind you to keep the bugs out it, it's nice that you could do that with this kind of course you could always just totally recoil it too <laughs> but um window coverage in here is really nice when you are using it for that kind of day function but notice they're actually putting the shade in the door there thank you now you're, you're not getting a full look at the TV because this has the full Happy Jack power bed and sofa lift system. I mean, what toy hauler really doesn't? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about something that every single like fifth wheel toy hauler has. I want to focus on the more unique qualities of this one. Like I like the washer dryer hookups right there and uh, our half bath over here. Something that really stuck out at me on this one is not like, oh, hey, look, it's a porcelain bowl, stool and a half bath or something like that, which is nice. But that sealed edge countertop is good sized. There's actually good countertop space in there, which if you're going to use this rear like an alternative bunk room, there's actually a place in here that you can set like toothbrushes and little things like that. That's hard to find in a half bath. And if you like brown, you're gonna like this interior. And if you don't like brown, you might still like this interior. What I like about it is the, uh, the color is obviously, as indicated, primarily in the, the brown family, brown on brown on browner, multiple shades of lovely brown, but everything has like a very rich sheen, like a shine and a luster to it. Everything in here, it just really feels classy. So that is like a, uh, a four seat multi reclining party couch. The very left and right hand seats where those spinning little cup holder things are, those are actually, um, uh, uh, heat massage seats and all of the windows through this big door side slide open for airflow but as you can see right there you've also got a blackout shade which is helping prevent a lot of light pollution from making this video look like crap and I love uh, I couldn't decide if I want to say like or love so I said <laughs> um, which yeah I think that's exactly how it went now if I see something I say something I noticed the little ceiling panel in here, something kind of isn't lining up exactly how you want. So you can see the line there in that seam trim. There's a couple minor, tiny, little glitchy things like that that I've found in here, nothing major. Now, you may have noticed that ladder hanging from the, um, the Happy Jack uh, bed back in the garage area. That's not this ladder. That's one of the things I really like about this RV, just some small, simple, but functional touches. This is a dual ladder rig right here. Um, 
you've got one ladder back for just the upper happy jack bed which i mean obviously it was dangling off the ground but that's because the bed was up in the air when it's down in the sleeper position it'll meet up there just fine and i really appreciate the fact there's air conditioning ducts and that window up there in that loft lofts usually feel like coffins that little touch right there uh, I thought that was something that was just, it was very nice, very thoughtful. Um, it's a kind of area that uh, a consumer doesn't see and doesn't appreciate when they're shopping for an RV. But if you're a person who actually uses one of these things, once you climb up in there, you're like, oh, wow. I, yeah, that's nice. I like that. Now we got a bunion burner right over here, electric heater to, uh, right across from the entertainment center. Because if you are at that far seat and you got your feet reclined, uh, you better like having warm feet. It's going to warm up in a hurry. And the good news, even if you're nearsighted like me, uh, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, see this thing without your contact lenses in. Uh, what do you say we, we go in for a uh, old school Wayne's World extreme close up? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Taking me back to one of the golden eras of Saturday Night Live. The other being... The very original first cast, I, I, that was the best cast they ever had. Fight me on that. Now, if we open everything up, one of the things I like here is it's, it's an awesome living room. I love all the door side windows, but the storage in here, that like floor to ceiling pantry, uh, that's, that's some seriously awesome space. That is a gas and electric auto changeover, uh, 18 cubic foot four door refrigerator freezer right there, by the way, next to that convection microwave. Um, that is, uh, and the microwave is above a larger 22 inch oven, by the way. So this thing is really uh, outfitted nicely if you're going to do some off gridding uh, with the generator on board. Uh, I mean, you could do anything you wanted, any way you wanted, anywhere you wanted for the most part, but there's a lot of places that are quiet hours and a lot of people don't appreciate that generator chug a lug a lug in every single night, all night. And being able to just you know, run a couple lights when you need to, mostly just some fans when it's cooler in the evening and have that fridge kick over to gas mode uh, so you don't have to run the generator the whole time. That is awful darn nice. But did you notice this is like double pantry? I mean, the, the kitchen storage in here is way better than what you would think. And all of that big like trash can space and all the drawers down there in the island, this thing rocks, guys. This... This RV is fantastic, and we haven't even gone upstairs yet. I love this execution. And right along on that same kind of vein, the bathroom up here just feels like any luxury fifth wheel bathroom. And that's one of the things I like about it, because again, all of the, the cabinetry, it's got that, it's not like plasticky shininess to it. It's just got a little bit of a gloss, just a little candy coating, like an M&M. You know, there's something so good inside waiting for you, but they just dress it up with that little candy crunch. Like here, we've got height adjustable shower hardware, and that is a one piece fiberglass shower enclosure, which as you know, has a corner seat, which as you know, is a nice space where Uncle Gary can shave his shins. And from there, we move into the bedroom where we see the third of three air conditioners. So you have uh, like bedroom and living kitchen airs uh, you have two air conditioners there that share centralized ducting. You have a completely standalone uh, direct dump for, uh, air system in the garage. That way you don't have AC ducts where exhaust can bleed through from the garage into your living area and smell up the whole place, you know? That's what's nice about this. Um, I'll, I'll absolutely give Cyclone credit. They were one of the first ones to really crack the code on this. Um, uh, uh, and a lot of those, uh, th well, the idea of a luxury fifth wheel, which just happens to have a garage on the back. Cyclone was really where a lot of that began. But what's uh, nice here is you, you see a lot of those concepts have been followed and adopted and executed extremely well over here. Now you saw how we've got that big like closet dresser slide. Uh, what would you do with that open pocket space right there? I feel... Like, it at least needs a couple elastic bands. I, I'm not a big fan of that, like, cargo netting stuff in my living area or anything like that. I feel like it needs something to make that space functional, though. Now, something I like here, too. Uh, it looks like this was built without a bedroom TV from the factory. And it looks like the previous owner added a nice articulating mount that swings around so you can get some good viewing without cranking your neck. But they left all the hardware there which is really nice because now you don't have leftover holes in the wall, nor do you have to worry about like 
man, I'm not good with tools. How can I do all that? And how about this giant bedroom viewing window? You wake up in the morning or you hear a funky sound. You can just peek out and find out if it was the neighbors or if it's a bear. Now this thing's big, it is beautiful, but uh, first and foremost, it is big, as I, uh, well, said first and foremost. 13,800 pounds dry weight. I think we're beyond where you even want to be on a three-quarter ton truck in one of these. Uh, you're up in uh, bigger truck country. Frankly, with the size of it, for the stability, you would not regret having a dually. And I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to shut up for a minute. Let you hear that generator running. Now I'm going to stop shutting up. <laughs> like I said, no joke. I pushed a button and it fired. There was no spitting, sputtering, no joke, and no token. That thing was ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, just the whole look of this. Holy cow, man. That thing has a very good... And what's kind of nice is I think they actually got a little bit ahead of the curve. Like, this is a very good-looking RV before a lot of other brands went to an exterior color package like this. The You know, the whites and the blacks with the gray accents. It looks tremendous. It looks modern, and it doesn't look dated, even though, you know, it is a, a couple years old. It still looks very fresh and very current. Let's give you a look through that pass-through compartment down there, shall we? <laughs> And this is one of the areas that a lot of fifth wheel toy haulers kind of struggle. They're, they're not known for having big basement spaces, but because they have those big garages, they can kind of get away with it. They can leverage that cargo space in ways that just a conventional fifth wheel couldn't. Now, just a couple things to point out here for you. I like the positioning of everything, like your central vac cleaning uh, system, your collection points, very easy to reach. And thank you, Dutchman! for mounting the in-command center up high where cargo's not going to smash it. I don't know why that is so unfathomably uncommon for most manufacturers, but it really seems to be. Obviously that slam latch is doing its job. We've got the quad moride easy entry step over here, and we are now greeted by awning number one of three. The front awning here is an 18 foot awning, and in a way it's acting like a free slide awning over the big door side seating slide and uh, again the window coverage over here in the door side is amazing but i love this i love how they just they repurposed a dead air pocket behind the sofa and gave us a sweet outside uh entertainment center look at that you can actually get to see my ugly mug reflected in that thing thankfully i'm wearing a hat because if uh we got to a feedback loop or the uh the, the reflection of the light off my forehead caught in the uh the, the viewfinder there oh Man, that would uh, that'd rip a hole through space and time, I think. So 18-foot awning up front, 10-foot awning in the back, plus uh, you've got a, uh, well, it's an eight, uh, eight and a half foot, I think, 100-inch wide. Eight, what is this? I got to check my specs. I don't know if it's 8.4 or 8.6 wide standing here. It's, it's hot. It's the end of the day. Apologies on my little flub right there. But you've got another awning across the back of this that's probably about at least 8 foot wide. Um, not to mention... Like you saw the uh, you know the the benches that could fold down into a sleeper in the in the power lift system in the garage, it includes, fr frankly, a nicely sized free floating table that is not too heavy that it's really bulky and awkward to carry around. Because if my skinny chicken arms can do it, well, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like so can you. But what I love here is this is the zero gravity ramp door system by Moride. Take a look at this. So I, I, I got you some splice footage here where you can see I've got the cables totally unhooked and there is nothing below this thing and yet there she is defying gravity, ladies and gentlemen. It is so easy to put up and down. You don't, uh, uh, where it's really nice, two things. Uh, the recoil on this was actually so strong I meant to get you footage of it just kind of hanging 45 degrees in the air but the recoil is so strong, it kept closing itself. So I had to have it like almost all the way down into patio mode just to get it to stay. Uh, when you go to put this away, the biggest problem you're going to have is that it's going to want to shut itself and almost slam itself before you can get a hold of it. But what's also cool here, like it has a power unlock system, but you see that yellow cord hanging down up in the garage? It, it's sort of like that emergency, holy crap, somebody threw me in the trunk of a car and I'm about to be the victim of a mob hit kind of uh, safety cable system which I think is actually the technical term for it. It's a very, very long, awkward name, obviously. Uh, but you can use that to manually put the door down from the inside, kind of cool. And if, oh my Lord, oh wow. I just had a total like, whoa, moment, like bro, like bro, dude. Okay, let's say God forbid something terrible is happening here 
and there's something terrible like a fire in the RV, you could, man, you could rip that yellow cord, you could kick that door down, you could be out of that thing like Dog the Bounty Hunter coming in after his next mark right there. Uh, I mean, just, just another thought. Never really considered that before, but some interesting safety implications there. Uh, dual 30 pound, uh, nope, dual 30 gallon fueling stations. They do not cross uh, into one another, by the way. The reason is, let's say you have like a, a high performance fluid for, or uh, uh, fuel rather, fluid, I guess fuel can be a fluid, uh, for your side by side or something like that. And you've got normal gas for the generator up front. Well, you don't want them to mix. Now, if you don't care about fueling your toys, what you can do, fill these both full of the same thing. When your generator uh, tank is exhausted, you can cross pump into it via that thing right there. So there is still a way to get you like some serious uh, generator uh, fuel capacity. Saloon radials here, which are, I believe, 75 mile an hour rated when they're brand new, actually have two more years of warranty than good years. You see that Moride CRE 3000 suspension system right there. And as we work our way down, look at the gleam and the shine on this wall. Holy cow, once again, all of the gloss, all the glitter right there. Enclosed privatized docking center. This has an excellent weather package on these, by the way, uh, as a cousin to a Keystone Fusion. It's built almost identically. It's something that uh, you know we've had here at Halet RV, the Fusions in the past. In case you're curious, that big box right up there, that is the transfer switch. That is what um, transfers the space-time directory through the flux capacitor uh, for Doc Brown when you put in the plutonium that you get from the Libyans. Does anyone even, does anyone even remember what I'm talking about right now? You don't hear about the Libyans very much in, uh, in movies anymore, but that was a big thing when I was growing up uh, as a kid watching movies in the 80s. So let me ask you, end of a long, hot day, you got your favorite cold drink in your hand, whether it's a conventional iced tea or perhaps a more Long Island variety. I, I don't know, you do you. Where are you hanging out? Like, the living room's awesome. The patio's awesome. The other entertainment patio is awesome. This rig is awesome. I think so, anyway. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to take her home, uh, I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can check for pricing and availability at any time. Any other questions uh, I haven't answered for you, let one of our outfitters know here and we'd be happy to assist. So take care. Uh, no, that's not how I do that. Stay safe, take care, have fun. I screwed up my own tagline, everyone.